As the head of community of Viacha, Tupper leads the community team and works alongside the leadership team to help make decisions that align with Viacha's community's needs and goals. Tupper cares deeply for communities, which stem from his own personal journey of finding friends and family through decades of online interactions. This is episode one of Virtual Focus with the head of community of Viacha, Tupper. All right, welcome to the first episode of Virtual Focus, and I got a surprise. We got Tupper here as our first guest at Virtual Focus. Welcome, Tupper. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for thanks for having me on your first episode. Dang. Thank you so much for joining. I'm very glad that we managed this, especially on a very p short period of time. It's I was uh, I was really impressed. <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> well. You know, we put out that, like, uh, it was a while ago, a couple months ago, we were like, hey, if you want to have an interview or talk to folks, just let us know. Uh, surprisingly, few people actually reached out, uh, although a lot of people said, we'll totally do it, and then not much <laughs> else. So I'm always excited when someone, you know, asks, because uh, uh, as both Straz and I will tell you, we like to yap, uh, so any any chance to do so, yeah, sure, <laughs> why not? Well, virtual focus is perfect for this when it comes to yapping i 100 percent <laughs> can tell you <laughs> okay tougher um mm -hmm. the audience already know who you are i, th oh, I, I do. very much reckon they do know the people call you the face of vr chat but <laughs> and it's not com the com com community manager it's not community manager i learned that now it's head of mm. community of vr chat that's what i yeah that's right that's right yeah we, we do have community <laughs> managers to be clear uh, we have um, several community managers that work at VRChat, uh, but I like lead up the community department, the team, as it were. Um, we have a very good team. I, 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 I would don't know what I would do without them. <laughs> I think the team is amazing. From the yeah. from what I know, I think, for example, Fax Machine. I'm, I think he is also in the support team as well. From what yeah. I know, I could be wrong, but uh, these are great people, and I think. Uh, it's just amazing that the Viace team itself is so like connected with the community and it's, oh, absolutely. it's amazing. Yeah. It's really great, especially for example, yeah. seeing you at the community meetups once in a while, just like hanging out and checking out other worlds. It's uh, yeah. always a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, those are always lots of fun. Um, we try and, you know, have not like formally, but like we just kind of by accident try and have people there as often as we can. Um, I try and go there uh, often, but Sunday is one of the few times where it's like, okay, there's nothing going on in VR chat. I'm not working. I can lay around and do nothing for a little bit. <laughs> and then I get bored and I get in VR chat anyway. So, you know. <laughs> but hey, it's it's amazing. It's amazing stuff. Yeah. I mean, Sundays are perfectly made for uh, meetups like this. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Okay. I do have a little, a, a few questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I prepared a lot. Uh, <laughs> oh, I didn't prepare at all. Did I mess up? <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the first question, I think you also talked about in other podcasts before, and that mm -hmm. is how did you become the head of community in, in the first place? How did yeah. it all start? Um, Let's see. I mean, I can go pretty far back. Um, I mean, I start. I played VR Chat before I ever worked at VR Chat, and I think, like, while people that have been around for a while know that, um, like newer folks probably don't. I'm, they're just like, oh, it's some dude they hired for, you know, he's done community management before, or something along those lines. Um, well, that's true to a degree. No, like I played VR Chat. I started in July 2017. Just found it for free on the Steam store. Um, I joined, uh, and the first place I went to was, um, what was it? A uh, presentation room. I mean, I went to the hub first because that's where it goes, you know, that's where you load into. But I went to presentation room first, and there was someone, I won't name their name, but uh, someone in a, a green haired Neptunia like avatar uh, who um, they, for some reason, started immediately talking to me. I was in like one of the default red robot avatars. And just started berating me, not like in a mean way or a hateful way, but just like bullying me in like a kind of funny way. And 
I kind of just played along with it. And like they were communicating also by writing. They don't, they weren't talking. So that already blew my mind once. Second off, I realized partway through, this is like some person that is like, I'm interacting with and then they're moving around. Well, we didn't have full body back then. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that also hooked me. Um, and then eventually like over time, uh, you know, that I, I just got really into VR chat. I got into creation specifically, like learning how to make avatars, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, since that might be one of your other questions, I'll leave those details sparse. The the part at which I actually got hired was about six months later. Um, I put my application in just for fun, um, saying, hey, like, uh, I can do community management. I've done this before on, like, you know, uh, amateur levels, running discords for, um, I ran a community discord for the game Homeworld, um, which then... Yeah, the, the company later came along and was like, hey, we'll take this over. Uh, can we have it? And I was like, yeah, sure. By that time, I was already working for VR Chat, So um, I, I'd done it for a while. Uh, I got hired as a support agent. So answering tickets, answering emails. And I got hired in the middle of the whole Knuckles craze, right? Oh, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, January 2018, we've got like 20K users online when a month ago we had 1,000. Uh, everything's on fire. Servers are on fire. Support's on fire. Um, we were releasing a patch every single day to deal with some new edge case of like, you know, I don't know, we're DDoSing our own servers or some stupid thing like that, right? And in all the meantime, our, our Gmail support inbox, which is all it was, it was just Gmail, just an inbox, not a ticketing system, nothing like that, was filling up with support stuff. So um, at the time, I, they offered a job and I was like, yeah, sure, like immediately, it was a part-time position. And uh, I immediately took it and immediately slammed to like 40 hours a week because that's you had to get the work done but right. i was also working another job my previous <laughs> job before this one um was i was doing doing uh data analysis for the u.s navy i wasn't in the navy i was a contractor um so i was yeah uh i was working on the f-18 program the f-35 program some other stuff fighter planes basically um and while that's cool and i like military aviation um it's it's not this. This is really what I was passionate about. So um, got really into like not only doing my support stuff, but once I'd cleared out the ticket stuff, I started kind of becoming a liaison for community stuff. Like, hey, how do we how do we get feedback on this particular stuff? How do people feel about X or Y or Z? And uh, out of the team at the time, I was the one that was the most in touch with like the current community. So I, I spent a lot of time translating, basically. Um, as people learned how to, you know, interact better with the community and that kind of stuff. And um, eventually I got promoted to community manager. And then in like 2021 or something like, I, I honestly don't remember, um, I got uh, promoted to head of community, which um, at the time was a surprise and a bit of a jump scare, but I just kind of rolled into it, figuring out what exactly that means, what I was doing. Um, but uh, at this point, I, I feel very comfortable, you know, doing what I do, which is a lot of meetings, 87 Google document tabs open at any oh, given time. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, and also managing the team, which is like so important. Like there, there's a million things I could do, but I'm going to there's too many things to do. So instead, I have people that are better than me at it to do it. Um, and uh, I'm very glad I have them. Uh, and I will I will speak highly of my team whenever I can. But yeah, um, kind of a long form answer. But that is that is how I got to where I am right now. <laughs> I can completely agree to the team, especially you have a very, very um, what was the word? Um, ah, It was on my tongue, but now I completely forgot it because I was like focusing on listening to you. But you have responsible. <laughs> there we go. You have a very responsible yeah. position especially like having to manage the team while having mm -hmm. so many like documents open and stuff. And it's really something that I think not everyone can do. And I think you also had to take time to like get used to this, this whole system, like from the beginning. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing For how this turns out. It, it really works well from what I noticed, especially as a user in, in VRChat, it, it seems to work really great. And it's we, just amazing. We've got a, We've got a lot of places that we can grow and improve, but it's certainly better than it was two years ago, three years ago, or even yesterday. Um, that's all I really care about is just like, if we're doing better than we did yesterday, then you know we're, we're doing good. We'll be much better a year from now, basically. Um, and uh, we do have, I mean, 
there's things I can we can be critical of ourselves about for sure. Um, and there's things like people criticize some of the ways that we communicate and things like that. But then there's also people like you and others who say like, hey, this is the most transparent communication we've ever seen from any game, period. Aside from like, I don't know, Factorio, but those guys are crazy. Uh, and I love them. <laughs> uh, shout outs if they ever see that, if they ever see this. Shout outs, Factorio. If you guys see this uh, oh, podcast God. episode, y'all yeah. know. <laughs> I'm but... envious of their blog posts. <laughs> I think it's, uh, again, the uh, the stuff is very transparent from, from what I see. And mm. it's just amazing. And actually... No, because of what you mentioned with the U.S. Navy, I now understand where you have the interest of uh, the Black Aces group, for example. That's <laughs> yeah. That's where I, that's where I got it now from. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've I've always been interested in military aviation, just because like, uh, just books I read when I was younger, and my my family was military family, although it was Air Force, not Navy. Um, but I I like planes they go fast they look cool like there's not much more than that to that um yeah i think the group is also great like the events they host oh, yeah. from what i know it's amazing like dog, oh, dog fighting and stuff their air shows are so Ooh. good like that that like there's a ton of crazy things you can see in vr chat right like I, I'm, i'm preaching to the choir here like there's amazing things you can see in vr chat but the, it's always the things where it's like wait of, of course you can have that in vr chat an air show is like that and Like, you can think, oh, of course you can do this, but then you actually see it and you're like, this is so cool. Like, you actually see uh, the aircraft they're talking about. And they're, they're like, right up on you. You can literally, like, after the air show, go get the plane and fly away. <laughs> like, that's, that's something you can't do in real life. But then you've got, like, the actual commentator telling you about the history of the aircraft and, like, its exploits and things like that, which is just, like, I've, I don't. I don't go to air shows. I don't go outside very often. Um, so, like being able to do it here is really nice and that's just that's just again one more thing that about vr that's just amazing you have the possibility to do stuff that you couldn't do in real life i mean you couldn't just jump or into you're too a lazy to do or you're too oh, well, that, oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that. laughs> yeah but you know uh, yeah. you could jump into one of the jets you would either be uh very forcefully ejected or in the case of some aircraft shot Uh, so please don't do that. Yes, guys. The, um, we also don't condone this kind of behavior, just in <laughs> yeah. case. Do not do not run towards the F-35. That, the, the guy with the gun is not afraid to use it. Oh, I, I completely forgot something that we should add in the beginning. This is also a disclaimer. Mm. All views and opinions held by those during the podcast episodes are not reflected in the companies or organizations we're, affiliate, we're affiliated with <laughs> or work for as they are only representative of the individuals of this interview. So Tupper is here as top of the person, not top of the Viacha staff, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's hard to separate at this point. God. <laughs> That's an existential thought. Cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it does. It does. It's it's kind of existential, but we don't want to go into yeah. the philosophy. I think. I mean, didn't uh, who was it? Mr. Beast did like a whole thing on this, right? Like, he either did an interview or like a, a talk or something about like there is no me, there is only Mr. Beast. There's like, only something Mr. Beast. crazy like that. It was something crazy. <laughs> Um, but like as crazy as it was delivered, I was like, uh, I get that. I get it. I get it. <laughs> like, I mean, he got a fair point when it comes to this. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was a like, weird position. There's another question I have okay. been thinking about since I've been playing VRChat. Since I've been playing VRChat, I know there is a topper. I know there is the head <laughs> of community. Mm. And the question that I have, and I think... I think n no one actually asked that question is how does a day in the life look actually from uh, the head of community? How does your day of a life of a, of a normal work day look like? Hmm. Um, it's so I, I actually wake up kind of early, uh, which is not something I would have expected to say three years ago. Like I've always been a late sleeper and I've always hated mornings. Um, but like, Over time, now I wake up at like seven or seven thirty, and I'll you know shower, get ready. I don't eat I don't eat anything until about noon or later, just because I'm trying to do intermittent intermittent fasting or whatever. I'm trying to. I'm lying to myself. I just I'm too lazy or hung or too busy. One of those to eat. So grab some coffee, um, 
sit down for a little bit, drink coffee, and I kind of just catch up with stuff to start. And that can be either stuff in Slack or messages I've gotten or emails. But a lot of times it's actually just me digging through like YouTube, Twitter, um, uh, Discord, uh, forum posts, um, seeing what people are talking about. Because VR chat's global. So like while we're sleeping, like for example, if I'm sleeping, then Japan's awake. If um, like you should be sleeping right now, but yeah. like we're <laughs> awake, right? Exactly. <laughs> so there's always stuff that's going on um, and you have to kind of keep up with the global uh, everything that's happening, right? Yeah. So usually it's um yeah i catch up with that kind of stuff i've also been watching and and finally coming to terms with uh the existence of tiktok as 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 oh. a boomer um <laughs> I, I finally figured it out it's i just treat it like it's it's just tv where you just change the channel every 30 seconds it's like okay yes, now like, i get it uh, yeah yeah exactly so I've been digging through and like pruning my algorithm or whatever. Now, like half the time I get people doing uh, VR chat stuff, which is usually like redubs of, of, you know, other TikToks, which I don't know. I think those are funny. Um, some other creative stuff there too. There's a lot of really like cool creative stuff going on there. So I'll catch up with that stuff. Um, and uh, then I have a little like cheap little hundred dollar, like electric standing desk. I'll set that to standing and I have a little treadmill because otherwise I'm not going to actually like, walk or move um so i walk on that for an hour or two while i am working on other stuff and usually that's catching up with documents um people ask me to review stuff uh, whether it's communications or internal reports uh and a lot of times things like features like uh, there's a lot of uh uh work that our product team basically like the people who build the features uh and build vr chat uh they want input on so i'll go through and there's comments things like that um, and usually by the time I'm done with all of that, it's around like 10 or 11 a.m. my time. And that's when the meetings kick off. And like 11 to 2 is prime meeting time. It's usually filled up solid. Um, sometimes later, um, just sitting in calls, talking to either people in VR chat or external parties or like people we want to buy software from um, or people that want to sell us something or something along those lines. Um, we just always like to have, you know, options open and know what's going on. So there's there's a lot of that. Of course, there's also lots of internal meetings. So we're talking about like, um, hey, we're uh, doing this thing with like, well, we've mentioned like character controller. Like, hey, we're doing this thing with character controller. What do you think? Or like, uh, here's some of the things that we're doing with some other upcoming feature. Um, and I'll provide some input there. So it's a lot of kind of aggregation of feedback that I've heard from multiple different sources and then delivering that uh, when uh, they ask for it. And then uh, once those are done, and also in the meantime, I'll usually find time for lunch in between. And it's like me going to the kitchen and slamming together a sandwich. Um, yes, let's go. And then, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get like maybe 30 minutes. Um, and this is of my own choice, just to be clear. Like I am the one who has, has given myself no time. Um, I'll, I'll, I've been rewatching Parks and Rec, like that's my one episode while I'm eating, because like like many internet uh, raised people, like I can't eat unless I'm watching something. Yes, so oh my it, god, it's so yeah, it's some kind of condition or whatever. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but um, I'll do that, and then past there, it's usually a lot of more micro community stuff. So then I'll contact people, or I'll talk to people who've sent me DMs, or um. Uh, work with people on the wiki uh, like that's been one of my big projects the past couple of months is uh, working towards the release of the VR chat wiki which is going great um, and hopefully will be fully released by the time uh, your video comes out so maybe check it out wiki.vrchat.com it looks very pretty <laughs> um, and also the content's very good I'll also uh, put it in the description just in case I'll, if you guys want to check this out VR chat uh, wiki link is in the description yeah. as well awesome perfect um but <laughs> From there, normally things kind of tone down. Like some some days it goes later. Like for instance, today we did a, a big release. We have input 2.0, so we got these nice new thingies. Um, you can like we got the new portals, which we saw earlier, which looks sick. Ooh, Lots yes. of new stuff. Um, but of course, with the new release, there's a bunch of stuff that's broken that the open beta missed. Um, so now we're collecting feedback, and it's like, okay, what's our first patch? What's like the thing we're doing in like a day? Do we have anything that's we need to do in a day? Um, or planning for next week. So I'll usually help out with stuff like that. Um, that's a fairly typical day. So it's usually about 8 a.m. till about 6 on the really busy days. And on like the quieter days, it's like 
I don't know, eight till three or four. And I can kind of, I'll, I'll use that extra time usually just to hop in VR chat and either like talk to people or honestly, I usually just go fly planes and shoot down people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In the, in the pilot, in the pilot world, I think that that's yeah. the one with all the different planes yeah, I, and stuff. I usually go to a uh, F-14 carrier flight. Like uh, that's Waikaku's world. It's Waikaku and 7-Eleven uh, work together in that world. And I I really like flying the Harrier in there. Like it's not the best performing plane. Anybody else can kick your butt in it. Uh, but I fly it so much that I logged in one day and like in the corner of the control console on the left side, uh, 7 had put my icon <laughs> just like on, <laughs> on the thing. So if you go to the F-14 world and you see like, my, one of my icons in there that's why it's just because i fly the harrier so damn much i'll try to put some images as well to put oh, into there the you go. i really want to see this i'm I'm, go I'm gonna check this out honestly this <laughs> <laughs> yeah they just showed up one day and i messaged them and it's like why is this in here and it's like yeah because you everyone always says you're in the harrier and it's like, yeah i got okay yeah mm -hmm. fair true I mean, I mean it's on it now you know it's it's, yeah. it's inside the control panel. <laughs> yeah, who's this Who's this blue anime girl in my cockpit? What is it? <laughs> yeah. It's an emotional support badge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're flying the hair. You're probably about to get shot down. Here, here's a small consolation prize. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I also have... Um, I mean, this is a small, not really a question, but also okay. something that does com uh, communicate with the question I have before with the day in the, day in the life of a head of community. And the thing is, are there pros and cons that you would like count in 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 your uh, in your job right now in as the head of community? Hmm. So there's a lot of pros. Um, I can't. I can't think of another job I would rather do, honestly. Um, if uh, the worst happened and I somehow had to like go look for a new job one way or another, I have no clue what I would do. It would probably be some other community management stuff, but I would have to really be passionate about it. So like, I just like what I do. Um, I like interacting with the people that I interact with. Um, you know, hopping in VR chat can be a chaotic experience. You can run into cool people um, and sometimes you can run into jerks. Um, but even like the jerks that you run into, if you just talk to them like normal people, I like that, you know, the, if, if you talk about something interesting, it's like, no, dude, I work here. Like I can, you got questions, you, you want to talk about something like they'll just sit down and talk to you a little bit. So I enjoy that a lot. I can, I'm, I'm more than happy to like talk to people about what I do and, you know, their feedback. Um, and then also like the team I work with, uh, of course, the community team as mentioned, but like the whole VR chat team is amazing, um, which is what made the, the, the recent like layoffs or reduction in force or whatever you want to call it very painful. Like that was, yeah, that was, no one's going to call that a fun experience. No one liked it. No one enjoyed it. No one wanted it. But, you know, Graham's uh, letter that we posted is indicates pretty strongly like yeah, we, there, there's things we have to do in order for VR chat to succeed. So that being said, like we still have an amazing team um, and being able to work with them is a like privilege. There are people there that are like they they could. I don't know. They could do amazing things. They could probably build spaceships or something. I don't know. Um, uh, let's see. Also, like. Importantly, the uh, the newer people that we've picked up that um, we've we've brought in as part of kind of filling out our our leadership roles um, are like I was very cynical when we brought um, some of the newer folks on because they're from big companies, right? They're very very corporate, whatever. And I had this picture in my head. I had this picture in my head of like what that type of person, how they think, what they do, uh, like how they interact with the world and the application or the product that they work on. And uh, I am glad to be proven completely wrong like i have never worked with people that are more open-minded and like i will tell them this is how this works this is how people interact with this this is what they do and i tell them the good things and i tell them the gray area things and i tell them the bad things and they're just like okay i get it like there's no this is wrong or i don't like this we need to stop it or whatever it's just i understand and they really do and it's 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 such a like i'm very glad to be wrong I'm wrong all the time and I like when I'm wrong uh, in most cases because I, I can be cynical about those types of things. But 
working with them is great. That's a huge pro. Um, and uh, let's see. Now for cons, this is harder because there's not that much. Um, but the biggest one is probably like, I'm not the type of person to say, oh, we need to return to office or whatever. But I previously worked in an office, right? And it's it's nice to have a culture where like, oh, you you know the people that are working where you are and you see them every day and there's a way to build up kind of a social Around structure you. there. Yeah, yeah, there's people that like just chuck an idea over the cube wall at like, hey, I have this idea and no, that's stupid or yeah, that's great. Let's work on it. Um, that's harder to do remote. Working remote is great for a lot of reasons. Um, and oh yeah, for context, everybody at VRChat is remote. There is no VRChat office. We have a mailbox in San Francisco and in one of the countries we have an, a like presence in because of laws, we have like a room with a fold out table and a chair in it that no one ever goes to. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, but, but aside from that, like we're, we're totally remote and that's challenging. Um, and it's hard to put that as a con, right? Like that has pros and cons. Um, it's probably the biggest one, though. It's nice whenever we do have team members meet up in real life because you kind of get that burst of feeling connected and that kind of stuff that while VR chat can help a lot with that, and we spend a lot of time in VR chat with each other, um, you can't beat it. Like, you can't beat, like, I, I went to Japan recently uh, just, like, on a half vacation, half work thing and had some coworkers and friends there with me, and it was like, oh, this is totally different, right? Um, Seeing them in person, I mean... yeah. It's it's it it has to be something different because yeah. I mean you're so used to seeing their avatars that yeah. you can't really imagine how they could look like besides like a photo. That the the funny thing is is like because I've interacted with them a lot in VR, like you pro you've probably experienced this and a lot of your viewers probably experienced this as well. It's like when you meet someone in real life that you've known in VR for a while versus someone that you've played, I don't know, World of Warcraft with for five years like meeting someone that you played another game with for like five years, you're, you're pretty cautious for a couple hours. Like you, your brain doesn't know, you don't kind of make the connection. VR, it takes like five minutes because you, you see how they move, you see how they act, you see how they talk, uh, you see their motions when they're talking with their hands or like how they move or decide to stand or whatever. And there's something in the unconscious like mind that makes it so much easier to be able to imprint there. So it's, It's pretty funny. Like, <laughs> there's been times when I've been able to recognize people just by like the way that they stand, or the way that they move, or the way that they talk, um, which would be impossible with like someone I've been raiding. I don't know World of Warcraft for five, ten years with. That's harder. It's completely different, right? It's completely yeah, different yeah. situations. Uh, and yeah, I do had that experience, and I feel like it's easier to kind of like connect with the person. IRL as well when you already yeah. notice their mimics their behaviors how they talk how they act because I mean I know I see you even though you're in your avatar but mm. I, I can highly guess this this might be you also acting the way you are IRL this also yeah. kind of depends on the person of course but in in this scenario for example is for sure one thing yeah, I am I, I am not a cute anime robot uh, in real life, unfortunately. I'm just, I'm just a n pretty normal looking dude. Um, so, unfortunately, I have not put my brain in a robot body yet. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to break the immersion, guys. I, I am a blue <laughs> oni, and that's all I'm gonna say. Woof. <laughs> no face. You're gonna me. have to. You're gonna have to put on body paint when you go to conventions. I'm, I'm getting flashbacks <laughs> of like Homestuck Connors players leaving gray marks everywhere. Now there's just gonna be blue marks everywhere. <laughs> like footprints. <laughs> oh no. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, just even where you sit or like wherever, it's just oh gonna be God. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, this is not gonna happen, I promise. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's okay. a quick way to piss off hotel staff. Oh, <laughs> I have to check real quick if uh, if my OBS is still recording just in case. Oh, it does. Okay. We had a short little technical difficulty, but we're back on it. So we're gonna repeat the question again, just to make sure. And again, um, what will VRChat look like in five years from yeah. your perspective? That's a, that is a good question. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, like a couple of people have asked it a few times and it kind of changes uh, a little bit. Five years is a long time, right? Um, I can I have a pretty good picture of one year and two year, but five years, th there's a couple things that we're working towards. Um, the first one 
is that we want more people to experience VR chat. Like that's kind of the core, right? Uh, we want people to be able to come in and experience the same magic that you and I did and your viewers did and everybody did that got them really hooked into VR chat. Um, and that's why we're expanding more platforms, right? Like we're going to iOS and Android and any new headsets, uh, you know, that, uh, that pop out, whether, you know, Meta's got new stuff coming out or uh, Valve, please, God, please, <laughs> comes out with uh, something. Um, Give us something, Valve. Yeah, God damn it. We've been waiting for so long. Come on, Gabe. Just literally anything. Just a, a mere crumb. <laughs> uh, but regardless, like that's that's the attitude, right? Like we want to get to every device that we possibly can uh, within reason. Um, you know, our team is is great, uh, but we are limited in resources. We're not like a massive AAA studio. We can't pass out like, hey, just port our game over to these things. And most importantly, like we've got user generated content, which is really the hard part, right? Like if all we had to do was just port a game, that's easy. Like you just kind of, you, 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 I mean, I'm oversimplifying, but you just recompile for the new platform. You fix any specific issues with it uh, and you make any changes that you need to, to account for that platform. For VRChat, it's very different. So we've got a lot of work to do to make sure content works on those other platforms. Cause a shader that was written and compiled for Android does not work for iOS, does not work for PC, does not work for ARM, does not work for whatever. So that's the challenge, and that's that's one of the things that we'll hopefully have solved in the next five years. So I would expect VRChat to be on friggin' everything. Be on, be on your refrigerator. I guess it's already <laughs> on your refrigerator. It runs Android. And if um, not, then it should work on your toaster. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to get a smart toaster. Mine's very sim mine's very analog at this point. But like, uh, you press yeah. it down, and then oh hell yeah! Minutes. No, I, I want the I want the like you know the the. I need from my toast needs to be tactile. I got to push it down. I got to hear the snap, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah. So, so more platforms is one thing. Um, one thing, actually, I'm glad we redid this question because I missed a very important second point. Um, I want in five years, we're going to have a very active and continually iterated uh, creator economy. Right. And that doesn't just mean like you can buy thing. That means like a huge amount of ways for people to, make a living through VR chat, right? Whether you are making avatars, you're making worlds, or you're you're running a community, or you are creating videos, you're running a podcast, or like you're in the great pug playing guitar with a jar sitting in front of you or whatever. Like I, I want it to be as free as possible for people to create stuff, entertain people, uh, and be able to make a living from it. Uh, and there's a ton of challenges from that. We'll be able to solve them, um, but it will take time. Um, like it's money makes everything complicated, but it also fuels our servers and pays our employees. And without it, like, I know I, I am very much the type of person to ad block the shit out of everything. Uh, I am very much the type of person to like go way out of my way for hours to figure out how to like, you know, run my own DNS server so I can do like my own blocking on my own whole network. But at the same time, I'm being very hypocritical because I'm, you know, VR chat is run on money. It has to have money to live. Um, so that, that's another thing. Uh, in five years time, we will have something that has been booted up, is spinning, and the flywheel is moving at a very great speed, right? Um, and uh, it pays for VR chat. It pays for our servers. It pays for our employees. And it allows us to grow. Um, and then, of course... Along all side, sides of that, it also encourages people to keep creating because they can make a living off of it. Um, and uh, that, that's by five years, it'll be basically ubiquitous. Um, you know, there'll be all kinds of interesting road bumps and complications and things like that. But my ideal thing would be like, you know, I, I like what you're doing. How do I support you kind of deal, but at scale. Um, and um, or maybe you just sell a cool thing and I like the thing you like. You know, I, I don't know. There's a million ideas to go with this. Uh, and I know everybody in their mind has their own like picture of what that kind of economy looks like. Um, none of them are 100 percent correct. Neither is mine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be a lot of exploration on that front. I mean, um, five years, five years is quite a quite a year that I just put into the question. But just yeah. like as a as an as an idea of what it could be and mm -hmm. to kind of like think about what how yeah. VRChat could look like. And I think it's actually a great... I mean, already, it's a great idea to uh, try to expand from 
to Android and iOS, especially yep. iOS. I'm, I'm I'm an Apple user. I'm sorry, but I oh, have to say, <laughs> oh, <what is> it? <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I I tried to use iOS. I I, I bought the full everything. I I bought like the i like iPhone 15. I got like the iPhone Pro. I got the I got the watch. I got the uh, Apple like the the ear, AirPods, whatever. Uh, I returned it in like uh, a week and a half. <laughs> I, I do not like the walled garden. I wish to partake of the fruit of the snake. I, I, I want out. <laughs> There's always like the fight between Android and Apple. And, you know, yeah. but we, we're like, we, we're not fighting. I mean, we can do this after the podcast, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I did have an Android tablet and I always used to like, um, like hack the root to, to like kind of like cheat in single player games. I don't know. That's what I usually did. Just for fun. Yeah, that's what that's what no, Android is good for. Yeah, opinion. Android. Well, I mean, you don't even have to root anymore. Thankfully, I haven't rooted my phone since like 2013. Um, but yeah, like the, the the basically whatever you have, whether it be you know your iPhone 10 trillion at that point or my Pixel whatever. Um, like we want people to be able to access VR chat wherever they are on whatever they have. So like imagine you're on the bus um, or the train if you're in a nice cultured country unlike mine that has nice trains. Um, then you could sit there and play VR chat on your device and talk to your friends. And it's like, oh, I got to go. I'm switching trains or whatever. And like you just fold up your fancy future phone and you just switch trains and then you open it back up and you're still there um, or whatever, you know, or imagine a VR chat that's on your watch that like you, you don't even get visuals through, but you can talk to like, I don't know, you're attached to someone's shoulder and like you can kind of hear everybody that's around you. So it's more like a call, but you are technically present in 3D space. Um, like it's crazy stuff like that, right? That allows people to kind of connect in with the magic and always remain, you know, within arm's reach of their friends or who the you know significant others or family that you know they can talk to. Um, and then you can upgrade that experience when you get back home, right? Like you're sitting there on the Android phone or the Apple, whatever, and um, you're dealing with kind of a a more difficult, you know, there, there's interaction difficulties with like a touch screen or whatever. And then you get home and you put on, you know, your your controllers or whatever we have at that point put on your headset uh and you're you have the full fidelity of everything so that kind of freedom is really what it's probably going to look like um it's going to be i was thinking about this earlier like if you imagine vr chat five years ago like 2019 uh people look back at old vr chat and are like it was so much better back then old vr chat sucked um it really wasn't that good. Like there were a ton of problems. It was very slow. The UI was not great looking. It was all programmer art. Uh, like avatar, yeah, avatars were clunky. It was very janky. And I'm not saying we're not janky now. We're absolutely janky. It's like kind of part of our charm and character, I think. But like take that, take that delta, multiply it by two or three, and then, you know, extend that out to the future. And that's where I kind of see where we're going to uh, end up in five years. So. Uh, I have high hopes. Um, you know, it depends on a lot of things. Uh, it depends, you know, obviously on the success of our, our creator economy efforts on VRChat Plus as we continue to improve that and add more features. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of it depends on all those kind of continued successes. Five years is a long time. Oh, yes. We'll see what happens. Oh, yes. I mean, we kind we could kind of predict like the next one or two years, but five years again. It's, it's yeah, more speculative as um, situation that I just put in, <laughs> just as a <laughs> test. No, no, no. Um, really interesting. Mm -hmm. I have high hopes for VR chat. Um, oh, I remember too. when I started making content in and started content uh, creation in uh, August of 2022. Actually, in uh, my I got my two year anniversary in uh, tomorrow. That's actually very funny. Um, and it's just amazing that that VRChat is like developing. I think it has been developing really fast from 2022 to 2024. That's what I noticed. Like yeah. hardware-wise, like the UI. And it's just incredible. Groups. There are so many features I could list um, mm -hmm. that would fill up the whole uh, podcast probably it's it's a lot of features yeah and it's really great that, okay that's, <laughs> I, I did mention that last time i forgot to but groups is something i personally very much want to push on like i i want to 
expand that to be like a very core feature, like something you interact with from the start. Um, so I would hope we would have that in five years. We'll see. I hope so, because groups do have like a fundamental. I mean, VRChat is a social platform, so groups yeah. does play a very huge role in how we interact with other um, uh, communities. And yep. it helps other communities to stay connected with each other, to represent their communities. And I mean, that's the that's the whole thing uh, of a social platform. Um, yeah, for sure. And exactly. And okay, Gersi, I think you can do the video on the Jumbotron. <laughs> I want to show you something. <laughs> oh, something okay. that is really interesting. You, you guys are going to see it uh, on the screen. I mean, in oh, the okay. post editing, of course. And... I don't know, Gersey, if you can like put it in. It's it's really I'm something have to, interesting. It's I'm have a to Twitter turn world post <laughs> that I oh. that I saw. I think I saw this. I don't know if, if it's possible oh, to it's... remove the menu, but you should be <laughs> able to see it. Yeah, I see it. I I think I saw this, but I, did, I like I saw the video. Oh, there we go. I saw the video of this get posted recently and a lot of people were talking about it. It got posted internally as well. It's it's amazing. It's really great. It's Oh, uh, is this it, using the new Unity AI system? I think so. I bet I it is. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's using the Unity AI system. It's That's cool. And that's actually the next topic that we're going to talk about and oh. cuz I really think this is amazing. This yeah. is great. Like from, I've, I've never seen a system of NPC characters in <laughs> VRChat that you are kind of able to interact with, like doing hat pets and stuff. Which <laughs> I is didn't a, see that part. That's it's, crazy. It's, it's <laughs> amazing. You can interact with these. It's great. I, I'm not sure if they actually wave back, but you know, hat No, pets it seems are... like they do. They're even reacting to like eye look and things <laughs> like that, which, you know, I don't have eye tracking in the beyond, but yet. This is... <laughs> whoever created this shout outs you will be linked in the description because this is absolutely amazing god's work yeah, that's crazy god's work and the question here for this is not that we have seen this video this mm -hmm. is the avatar npc system created i think by um i don't know there's the name of the studio has something with tokyo in it so it's probably mm. a japanese uh, creation studio yeah and the question is do you think will that AI is going to have an impact on VRChat? Do you think that AI is going to kind of push VRChat? Oh, man. Or I, I think, so you have to divest that, especially today, because there's two different, like, that's one type of AI, right? Exactly. But then when you say AI in modern day, like in 2024, what you're typically talking about is LLMs or generative AI. Um, so those are different things. They're not the same thing. Um, the uh, the AI system that Uni they're probably using there is the new Unity uh, AI and, uh, NPC system. It's not using, as far as I'm aware, like an LLM or anything like that. It's just a more a more intricate way and native way to be able to build NPCs in Unity games. And I mean, VRChat is a Unity application. We can use core stuff that's in Unity. And I think this kind of stuff allows uh, creators to, without having to program their own stuff in Udon, um, like have interactive dynamic NPCs. Um, you could use this in an RPG. You could have it just in a social setting. Uh, you could just have a cute like Rusk following you around that you can head pat <laughs> at will, right? Which is probably going to be one of the primary use cases. Yes. And that's totally okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it'll be very interesting for this particular brand of AI. Like uh, I think there's a lot of creative things people can do with it. And as is typical with VR chat creators, they'll probably take like, the base implementation and augment it to just some crazy thing. Like I expect in a couple of months, someone will come up with some ridiculously novel idea that uses the system in a, in a cool way to make something new. Um, I mean, we've talked about jets a bunch before, but I'm pretty yeah. sure you could use this system to make a pretty decent, Ooh. like flight AI, like someone that you could train against or, or Ooh. just have as like background, you know, uh, flights. Um, I think it's designed primarily for like, characters so like you know rigged uh, humanoids um but i think it also allows that kind of functionality as well depending on how you interact with it that so that's actually be awesome thinking yeah. about the the idea itself is really great just for like yeah. training or like maybe even like host shows 
with uh, yeah with maybe that would be yeah and you could have uh you could have your own wingman I mean, you could have the, I mean, that's, that's actually a real thing is drone uh, wingman with one human, you know, point flyer. Um, you could do the same thing with VR chat, right? Uh, assuming that this system can do that. I mean, this is kind of the first, the first uh, thing that people are, are doing with the system. Now for the other types of AI, uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. And also a very, like, que- a, a very fraught with, like strong feelings kind of question Mm, mm. Um, because a lot of LLMs uh, and in particular image generative AI are trained on dubious sources. Um, You know, no one ever thought that their stuff would be used to train an AI model. And of course they never built that into the license. So, you know, that's, it's not a thing they've been accounted for. So there's never been rules against it. And then someone came along and said, okay, I'll use this for training data since it's not, you know, technically against any rules. So that, that's all complicated and everything like that. We got to figure all that out. LLMs are a little bit easier because, like, it's it's harder for you to. I don't know my random Reddit comments. I don't really care if someone trains off of that. For example, <laughs> I think I think um, as far as AI goes, we are reaching a bit of a. Um, we are on the downfall from the 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 peak of like the bubble of things, but just like any technology, VR included. There's always this massive starting bubble. Starting bubble. Yeah, yeah. There, there's the big peak, and then it falls back off, and you fall into what the va- the valley of the hopelessness or whatever. And we're gonna go through that where it's like no, the the general consensus is that AI is not that important or not that useful. It's not very good. But in the background, people are gonna keep using it and keep figuring out ways to use it. Like Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, specifically the one that helps you write code, is amazing. GPT for certain uses is amazing. Um, it saves you a huge amount of time. So those types of things only get better and like they don't get worse over time. So I expect like, I don't know, five years from now, what if we augmented this system, the, the, the Unity AI system with, hey, you can now tag in like a generative voice model with a generative like text model. If you've ever read, um, I guess they have a show now too. Uh, God, what's it called? Uh, there's a manga I'm reading that the name is like on the tip of my tongue um, where they're playing an MMO in like a VR pod oh, or whatever. Um, uh, not sought out online. It's um, no, it's the it's with the it's these two uh, brothers and one brother and sister. It's I not think. that one. It's oh, the one not, with the guy with the one. bird head. Oh, God, you know what? I'm looking at my phone. Where's my dang phone? <laughs> it's over here. Um, but while I am awkwardly looking at my phone, uh, you guys should subscribe NPC- to this channel. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you should do that. But also, uh, the NPCs in, in that game are all driven by like AI. And Shangri-La Frontier, there we go. Um, it's great. You should read and or watch it. Um, and, Shangri-La Frontier. Yeah. And like the NPCs that they interact with are basically like they're, they're interacting like humans. And like if I had read this five years ago, that's ridiculous. But now I'm reading this and I'm like, you could do this it'd be hella expensive but you could totally do it like (laughs) you know there there are people out there who are on their own fine-tuning ai models for character interactions and then there are big companies doing it too um give five years from now imagine that like you know tpus are small and cheap and everywhere and you can run a local model or even one on a server for cheap you could have you know, a game world that's defined in your prompt and your in your in your kind of script, and then the NPCs just kind of roll with it. Imagine playing D and D, a free like free rolling D and D campaign that's just dynamically generated for you on the fly Whoa. in VR chat with NPCs, and it's unique for everybody, right? Or you can bring your friend in, and like all of a sudden they're a new character in the in the thing. We're so getting I don't know. into ideas that oh my god, this is crazy. Thinking about five, this five years. Five years is a long time. In AI, that's a huge amount of time. I mean, AI research has been going on for, you know, since the 50s and 60s. We're just only now getting to the point where it's like... Actually blowing people, up. Yeah, yeah, there's something to show off. It's not yeah. just, you know, the old evolutionary, like, learning models of let's teach this thing to walk and it just falls over for 500 iterations. Now it's actually something useful. Um, but, yeah, there's there's still a bunch of, you know, I'm sure there's people watching this who are just like, oh, no, don't do that. You'll ruin everything. You know, AI is terrible. <laughs> Th- there are ways to use that responsibly, to use the technology responsibly. Um, and once all that gets figured out, 
and we have the capability for people to be really creative using these tools. It's just yet another Photoshop. It's yet another Blender. It's yet another Unity. It's it's just another tool, and you can use it to make some really compelling, interesting things. I'm really looking forward to this in the future. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Five years is a long time. With it the is. way that AI is uh, evolving right now, this could even be earlier, maybe later. It really depends on the evolution of AI and how VRChat is going to change in, in this five-year period that I mentioned uh, in the question. So there's a yep. lot that can happen during that time. So there is. A lot of um, speculations, may I say. <laughs> For sure. Also, Topper, um, I have checked out your YouTube channel. As you know, I did oh, no. my research. <laughs> oh, of course. And um, are you going to upload videos again? <laughs> <laughs> I. It's funny that you mention that. Like, I, I, because of work, I, like, don't have time or energy at the end of the day. I'm always, like, exhausted, and I just want to lay down and turn my brain off. But... Um, I have been thinking about doing just kind of videos on things that either interest me or like people would probably be interested in hearing me talk about. Like one example is I have, I, I'm wearing the big screen beyond headset, which is great. Um, but I also have the big screen audio strap, which is like the, the one that they're shipping yeah. and not many people have their hands on it yet. So not a lot of people know if it's good or not. Um, so I wanted to do like maybe, I mean, four or five minutes, just like very rapid fire kind of video on it. Um, so I don't know. I might do stuff like that. Uh, people probably want me to do like a full avatar tutorial video again. I don't think I have the energy for that. <laughs> and plus like making avatars is so different now. Like it's, it's not different, different, but like I've learned over time that the best way to learn how to make avatars is not to follow a one, two, three step guide. Like that's actually a terrible way to learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's about learning kind of the reasons why you do certain things and why you do it in whatever order and then you can kind of put things together um, trial and error type yeah, of yeah thing. A, li a little bit it's it's more about mm -hmm. like if you give people a one two three step guide you rob them of the capability of understanding why they're doing it right um it's it's a teaching method um and while a tutorial that you know google only shows the middle 15 seconds that just tells you okay here's how you do exactly this thing that might solve like one or two people's problems um but like a broad scale video like imagine a broad scale video that somehow covers like okay here's how you atlas here's the reasons why you would want to do it here's the whole rendering pipeline to explain why it's important to do it in these cases here's the times it's a bad idea to do it and now I'm not going to tell you the cases in which you should do it. You should figure out all of this. Like, but don't do this. Yeah. And then figure out yeah. if you should do it or not. Or, and it, it's, it's complicated, um, which is also not what people want. Like, I don't know. People just want... I did actually one of the videos you probably saw was the, uh, the Fizzbone hair rotation thing. I had one that's like yes. two minutes long explaining <laughs> it and explaining all the steps or whatever. And people were like, that's too long. And I was like, fine, I'll give you your friggin' Zoomer attention span TikTok. <laughs> you know, I'll put I'll put the uh, treasure heist or run or whatever the heck it's called. Tunnel run. I don't know. Um, in the corner, Minecraft speed runs. If you put it on TikTok now, it's going to be absolutely successful. Yeah. I'm telling I, you. <laughs> I don't know if when I want, I don't want to unlock those demons, you know. I don't want <laughs> <laughs> The, there was uh, also something I think that we're also going to show at the end because Tapa used to be a part or is still a part of the Mute List podcast that yeah one I, I don't know if you guys still host uh, the Mute List no. podcast the, the Mute List was a podcast that literally one of my friends was like hey let's have a podcast and everyone else was like uh, okay sure uh, <laughs> and, and we did it and we named it after a stupid meme that they, in particular, were obsessed at the time. Uh, was, that's another one added to the mute list. Uh, I don't, I, I don't even know what that's from. Um, and it kind of was just us talking about whatever we wanted to. It was often uh, about VR chat because, like, it was in VR chat. Um, but uh, yeah, it kind of had not really a focus or format, which is probably why it kind of petered out. Um, we, we had a couple of uh, funny, weird episodes here or there. We went to a Taco Bell uh, and did one. <laughs> that was a good one. 
That was also the first time that one of the the members of the mute list went to a Taco Bell. So it was also, you know, a, a learning experience. <laughs> another for, for that. another new experience to the list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just talked about a lot of stuff. One thing that we did do regularly was uh, when the Game Awards would come on, we would like kind of co-stream it with the giant video in the background. And we were at the bottom, like kind of Mystery Science Theater 3000 it. <laughs> um, and we just, you know shit post and yell at jeffrey and whatever um i think that was one of the times that we did it is either when they were about to release or they announced death stranding and i got like excited about that i, I don't know there were a couple of times that game actual games that i enjoy came up which are very few there's not many of them <laughs> but yeah the, it's a fun podcast. We my my favorite one was again. I think I told you this before we started the podcast. That was the um, um, the one in Gary's mod. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely my yeah. favorite one to watch. It is so. It's it's the first the first minute, and it's just, just. Oh yeah, we have to I'm, play this later on. It's great. Yeah. It's like <laughs> Gary's mod is great because like if you just boot up a GM construct server with like your friends, the first thing everybody does is spawn bathtubs, shove sh like thrusters on it, and <laughs> yes. try to kill everybody. With it. <laughs> and that's that's exactly what happened. Um, and we did that I think for an April first, you know, like a um uh April Fool's Day kind of deal. But it was yeah, it was stupid. We all built our own chairs. I think like Noe's flipped upside down or something, <laughs> or no, Combat's flipped upside down halfway through, and they had to figure it out. It's it such, was, it's great. It's great. Yeah. It was a great thing to yeah. watch. It's and of course we use the source voice chat. We did not use like Discord or whatever. We used the <laughs> the <laughs> shitty like you know yes. eight bit voice. Yeah. That was the that was the best part about it is you guys were using the Gary's mod voice chat to this, and the voice yeah. chat in Gary's mod is so crackly and wobbly, <laughs> yeah. and it's just it's perfect for for exactly for this podcast or at least yeah. for this episode it's amazing we're gonna check this out at the end as well perfect and i'll have some actually some memories brought back we <laughs> we're actually almost at the end um okay. i did had like uh well not questions but more or less points future implementations for vrjet i mean we talked about this in the, what will vrjet look like in five years and future implementations would be you uh, you guys would increase to different or well, expand to different platforms yep. ios and new headsets that may come out god valve please release yeah. your decker <laughs> one jesus day. christ one day i'm really You're hoping. gonna kill bradley <laughs> Brandley is re Brandley has been sweating the last two years and just looking. Oh, he's in, been in sweating the, the past so two good. days. But there, there's a bunch of stuff oh, coming out yes. now. Oh. It's, I'm yeah. hoping. I got high hopes. I got high hopes. Maybe next year. Hopefully, even this year for an announcement. Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Actually, this is already the last question I have, and this is the question that is the most important of this podcast. It's really, really oh. important. So okay. sit sit in tight because VR cat or VR rat? Oh. Um <laughs> So VR rat has the gremlin energy, right? And I'm I'm very much more identified with that than anything else. Um but I have a personal reason to choose VR cat. Uh, and that Ooh. is because uh, when we were originally doing the character design for VR Cat, we knew that we wanted to do a cat because it's kind of like the cutesy, almost kind of like a nod towards Cat Girl kind of, you know, anime thing in VR Chat. Um, we wanted to do an animal because that also kind of leans in the furry angle a little bit. Uh, and cats are very curious. Uh, so obviously that lined up there. We wanted to do the cardboard box because it's like <laughs> they're a space, they're a space cat, but like they're not quite ready yet. Like they're still just kind <laughs> of, you know, they're, they're, they're exploring imaginary worlds, which is very, very similar. Um, but the reason why VR cat is an orange tabby specifically is because of a cat I used to have. Um, I used to have a cat who passed away, unfortunately, in 2019. Um, and I wanted to to honor him, basically, to have that in there. Uh, so my, my small contribution was like, OK, I want this to be an orange tabby cat. And everyone was like, OK, that sounds cool. Um, so. Uh, I will, for personal reasons, go with VR Cat, despite the fact that I very much identify with the Gremlin <laughs> shitpost energy of VR Rat. <laughs> That's a good answer to this. That's a yeah. good answer. I'm sorry, but I have a bias. I have a cat myself. My cat is orange. <laughs> 
The only thing I would have to do is put a put a box on on her head. Oh, don't do that! And then she'd be so mad. Um, yeah, she's she's gonna be very mad if I do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, I do have a bias for VR cat. I'm sorry, guys, but VR oh, red is also amazing. Come on, it's yeah, it's a tough contest. <laughs> the, I think the la like someone's been. I forget if it was you or some other people have run polls before, and VR at usually wins. Yes. But I mean, it's usually on Twitter, and Twitter's full of gremlin energy people, anyway. So you know, it was me. It was me. I was trying yeah. to do some political unrest in VR chat. Okay, no, <laughs> no, no. it was more of a more for interest to see what people would rather choose when it comes to an electro, uh, electoral pr uh, election, if there would yeah. be some kind of uh, more more of a meme thing. And Perfect. Do you think? Um, do you think there's gonna be more? Um, mascots added to VRChat or do you think VRChat Ooh. is going to stick with VRKit or VRRed? I do have seen mm. v VR Bat, which is gonna, which <laughs> basically VRRed with, with wings. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's literally what a, what a bat is. is a, well, not literally, but pretty but, close to a rat yeah. with wings. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, v VR Cat was very deliberately designed um, and like had an intentional purpose. VR Rat was more of like one of our uh, people on our team was like, this is cute. I'm going to make it. And then everyone <laughs> ran with it. Like there was no marketing. There was no research. There was no nothing. We just like did that. Um, and while that's cool, like always want to have that kind of like energy around. And that, that's very much in the spirit of VR chat. Um, it's also like, or, is our job to make VR chat or is it to make the VR cat cinematic universe? Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, we Who have knows? a wonderful marketing person on board. So uh, maybe she'll get inspired at some points. Like we got to have a, a VR. Uh, I don't know. I can't even think of one on the top of my head. I'm terrible puns. <laughs> we already have a VR hat. That's not exactly a mascot. VR hats. Oh, oh, red. I always have to think of um, the uh, VR, VRC gear shop. Although, yeah. 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 I think that was the VR hat yeah. thing. That was that was the tweet that we put out that was like, something big is coming, new, new innovation, blah, 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 and that kind of thing. People did not like that. So, <laughs> lesson learned. Do actually, not overhype. <laughs> I actually, I actually do have the the VR chat cup. I'm really, really happy with mm. it. I've been hand washing it. I've seen some. Yeah, don't dishwash it. Don't do, don't, guys, please. <laughs> I've seen someone on Twitter using it, putting it in the dishwasher. And the thing is, if you open up the package, it even has a little like text that says hand wash recommended. So yeah, stick well, to this. But you know, you could have. You know, it's it's an easy mistake to make. You know, you bleary in the morning, you finish your coffee, put it in the thing, and you forget it's in there, and you run it on hot cycle, and now you've got a melty VR cat. So. Yeah, but eh. I mean, just better stick with the recommendations, you know. So probably, please don't melt your VR cat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually all that I have for the questions. Okay. Um, I don't have, I I don't have actually. Uh, anything else now i have to copy this link really quick so we can put this into the into the oh no 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 uh, control z <laughs> and control c and v okay i will covered. put this in really quick because <laughs> it's it's great i love the the <laughs> the introduction to this podcast is just gold oh i gotta i gotta turn my volume back up I think I know what this is, but I think uh, <laughs> it's at the yeah it's 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 at the one minute mark. I'm not gonna be able to use the audio myself, but I'm gonna edit in post. But <laughs> oh my god, that audio. <laughs> Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. This is <laughs> and you guys put oh, yeah. all these cherries on there, so everyone has like an extra chair, and it's just it's just amazing. Oh yeah, here we go. We have our intro. Yes, the intro. Is our our new our our. We normally have a different intro with the music by Zeon. <laughs> thank you. Um, but 
It's good. It's, the audio is so bad. It's so, the audio is just oh my god. Yeah. But that that's what I think makes it so amazing to watch. It's, I had such a fun time just watching this. I was like researching a little, and I stumbled upon to this, and this is by far my favorite. This is by yeah. far my favorite. I, I think this was probably our, our magnum opus, honestly. The. Uh, <laughs> I, I forgot that uh, whoever did the editing at the bottom said special guest, uh, like, parasite whatever unit from Metal Gear. And it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. This was the kind of stuff we liked doing. Like, there was no seriousness to it. We weren't as, like, well put together or whatever um, as uh, as you are or other podcasters were. But, like, this was just something we did for, for fun. Um, and... Uh, it's great I, stuff. I, I, I don't I don't know what we're talking about here. I think we're just doing our introductions. Oh, I forgot I made my chair like it float and it has the little hover balls on it, but it also has uh, uh, like all the particle effects I could shove on it. The thing I love about Gary's mod is that if somebody like uses the chair and they sit on it and you use like like strings and stuff, you can like interact with it and like make them spin like really fast and like yeah. use a catapult or something like that. It's it's yeah. it's great stuff. But I, I think just, we were running this server on just like I think like someone's computer. Oh my like God. It, it wasn't even a server we found or set up properly. It was just like a listen server. <laughs> but this is something that I really wanted to show you, and it's just it's just amazing. I think we have to watch this uh, after the post podcast as well with audio. Yeah, I need I need to go back and watch that again. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's great stuff. It's really it's amazing. It's it's one of my favorites that I've seen on the video uh, on on the channel of yours. It's really amazing. <laughs> well, and thanks. Tupper, thank you very very <laughs> much for taking your time uh, today, um, of for being here and talking with me about yourself as well as uh, the future of VR chat. This is also be gonna be in the thumbnail, the future of VR chat with Tupper, and. <laughs> Also, thank you very much for Gezibel, our ca cameraman, who is doing such an amazing job with the with the cameras. It's just coming. You are doing such an amazing <laughs> job, and big <laughs> shout outs, and all the links to Gezibel as well as to Tupper and to the things that we mentioned today in this podcast will be linked in the description. And again, thank you very much for watching this podcast or listening to this podcast. And stay hyped for the next uh, episode. And we'll see each other in the next episode, I reckon. Take care in the virtual as well as in reality. Ciao, ciao.